Hey, for all the authors that are listening out there, I wanted to share with you this great email that, that we received here at the Reading With Your Kids podcast from Dr. Linda Mubarak. She is the, uh, a past guest and the author of Maxine's New Job. Here's the email. Dear Fatima and Jen, good news. Maxine's New Job has been nominated to receive the prestigious Henri Award at the 2018 Christian Literacy Awards for Outstanding Literacy Work in the Children's Book Division. I sincerely believe your certifying Maxine as a great read helped bring increased social media attention to the book. Thank you for the exposure and the great marketing. We are so happy for Dr. Linda Mubarak that her book, uh, Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read, Maxine's New Job, received this prestigious recognition. We would love to help your book receive that same kind of recognition. If you are interested in having your book considered for our Reading With Your Kids Certified Great Read program, please visit our website, readingwithyourkids.com. You can click on the contact button, send us a, a note, and we'll send all the information back to you. Or you can go right to our Certified Great Read page on our website. It's fun, it's easy, and it is really, really an effective way to let the world know that your book stands out above all the rest. The Reading with the Kids Certified Great Read Program. Reading with your kids. Hey, 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 so great to see you. Come on in. Hi, my name is Jed Lee, and this is the Reading with Your Kids podcast. We are coming to you from the beautiful neighborhood of Reville in the southwest corner of Boston, Massachusetts. We are so excited that you're part of our beautiful Reading With Your Kids family. Please be sure to connect with us on social media, facebook.com slash reading with your kids, at reading with your kids on Instagram, and at Jedly Magic on Twitter. Our guest today is Dr. Carol Soloway. She is here to talk to us about a subject near and dear to my heart, the Surprise Circus. Hey, before we go any further, we want to let you know that this episode of the Reading With Your Kids podcast is brought to you by Big City Dance, a great new picture book by Virginia Doherty. Mo Doodle is a country mouse who decides to move to the big city in search of excitement and adventure. Although he finds plenty of fun, he soon realizes that he is homesick and missing his friends. This story is told in a bouncy rhyme and rhythm with incorporated dance movements for young listeners and readers. Discover how Mo solves his problems while exploring and living in the big city. Big City Dance is ideal for children of three years old and older. It really is a fun book. Check it out today. Big City Dance by Virginia Doherty. Joining us on the line right now from beautiful Orange County in Southern California. Our guest is the author of a, a, a book that's near and dear to my heart called The Surprise Circus. Please welcome to the show, Dr. Carol. Dr. Carol, how are you? I am great. How are you? I am wonderful. We are at day, I don't know if it's day 14 or day 20 of the great quarantine of 2020 and everybody is working hard to be cooperative, to stay inside, to stay safe, to flatten the curve. And one way we're doing it is that we're reading lots and lots of books together. And I have a feeling that the Surprise Circus would be a great book to read any time of the year. Tell us all about the story, please. Sure. The, the Surprise Circus is a book that I wrote with my six-year-old granddaughter. Her imagination took my idea and made it fly. And in the story, which is so important for this time, for, for now, you know, when we have so much negativity, this story is about a six-year-old girl who decides when the circus doesn't come to her town that she wants to call the ringmaster. And the ringmaster starts sending her a package every week. And the first week, it's a strong man who lifts all the furniture, even when they're sitting on it. And then the next week, it's um, a magician who makes even her baby sister disappear. So with all these amazing, mischievous circus people, she decides to be the ringmaster of her own circus. All right. But she's scared, and in the book, she learns to believe in herself 
and to be hungry to get what she wants. And that's what we need to teach children to believe in their own, in what they're great at. That is, whatever it be. That is an interesting, an interesting sentence. We want kids to be hungry to get what they want. Can you elaborate on that a little bit? Well, to tell you the truth, being hungry is not my, uh, I didn't, I'll be glad to elaborate, but I can't take ownership of it. That's Les Brown, the, the fabulous motivational speaker. That Those are his words. He says, you've got to be hungry. And in the book, little Aria says, by the way, to Les Brown's grandson, when he tells her to be hungry, he says, we can serve popcorn. But he explains being hungry means you've got to want something so badly that you'll do, you'll work day and night for it. And that is, th- those are the words of, of Les Brown who wrote the foreword for this book because he's, it's taking his message, which he's told to millions to children. You know, I, I agree with you. I've coached very competitive soccer teams, and my daughter was a competitive dancer. And so that idea of being hungry and working really, really hard at something and perfecting something is something that I'm familiar with, something that I'm comfortable with. I, I'm not saying that I perfected anything in my own <laughs> Me neither. But it's just that that hunger for it, to go after it, I, that, that's something that I certainly can relate to. But I think there's a lot of folks out there who may not. They may, oh, my, oh let kids be kids, and why do we have to compete? And uh, I, 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 I've mentioned this on the podcast before. When my son was seven, somebody got word to somebody else that I had co- was a soccer coach. So the local youth team called me up and said, we need you to coach. And then after I agreed with that, I found out it was one of those leagues where they don't keep score. And I thought, I don't think this is going to be a good fit for me. What would you say to, you know, if you encountered a parent and they said that, wow, why do we need to push kids to to, to be competitive? And why can't everybody just play and have fun? That's a great question. And being a very competitive tennis player, my answer is going to be uh, kind of with that. Because I think that, you know, what separates what separates one from the other is that desire to to succeed that just what motivation that's what it's all about you know we have to, have to have that fire I, I I think it's so important and when you said about not keeping score uh, I don't know I don't know how you can get children to want to succeed and to want to exceed their their expectations really unless there's going to be that reward whether it's an a whether it's um a win i think we all we all need that it's human nature mm-hmm. and that's sort of in my mind contra- contrary to our our we're competitive animals yeah, I, t- I tend to agree with you. I, I absolutely do. Um, one of the things that, that was very clear to me when I was surviving and, and trying to get through that, that year of coaching where they didn't keep score was that the kids kept score. And, mm. you know, and every time, and we had the team, uh, you know, I went in, I didn't know anybody, and my team was kind of picked for me. And, and when we went out to play, it, we were weren't great. We're, there was a great group of kids, but they weren't great soccer players. And I would bring them back after, you know, they, they would let in the 10th goal, and I'd sit down with them, and I'd say, come on, guys, we're having fun. This is to have fun. We're not keeping score. And they all turned to me and said, what are you talking about? It's 10 to nothing. They've scored 10 times against us. And I go, but, but it doesn't count. And, and they just, they didn't buy it. So, I, you know, I agree with, you know, I, 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 guess the, I guess the thing for me is that and, and I think that you're saying the same thing in a different way. When we're in competition, when we're out there and you're, you're trying to be hungry for what you want, you're not so much being in competition 
in competition with others and not thinking about beating others. You're thinking about going out and being the best you can be. So you're, you're kind of in competition with yourself. Oh, that's exactly um, that's exactly what it's a, like in the book. The little girl says when when Les Brown's grandson says to her, "You've got to believe in yourself, in your greatness." And she says, "But I can't lift furniture like the strong man. I can't make things disappear like the magician." And and then she thinks about what she's great at, and. You know, she says, my bus driver says I'm a good bus buddy. My teacher says I'm smart. But then she realizes that the thing she's so good at is she is a great, great big sister. Mm. And that is what is so important to realize what we're great at. And yes, we do keep score, whether, whether anybody does tells us don't keep score. We all keep score, I think. It's yeah. human nature. Yeah. Was it spending time with your granddaughter, talking to her, probably reading books with her, telling stories with her, was that where the inspiration to write a children's book c- come from? Or did you always have a dream of writing a children's book and it just happened th- that you had this idea with your granddaughter? Well, I did write two novels for adults. Mm-hmm. And then I I actually, what happened was I was at a school with a friend's daughter and I said to the little girl, you know, we were in Compton, do you know that if you work really hard, you can be anything you want? And she said, yes. And I said, what do you want to be? And she said, I want to be a princess. Well, I thought, okay, you know, that's, I said, no, no, no. What do you want to do? And she looked at me like I didn't know what I was talking about and said, if you want to be a princess, you've got to marry a prince. And I decided, you know what? So many stories, the stories that we're telling our children are, you know, such like, you know, marry a prince, become a princess. But I want to write a story that has a moral that's going to get them to believe in themselves, to to find their own greatness, to to be motivated. So that's how that came about in terms of in my mind. But in terms of the actual story is we were talking about a circus, which you <laughs> you know about. And I said, well what if what if and that's the word for children. What if mm-hmm. they'll it opens up a world. I said, what if the ringmaster sent you a package? And that's how the story evolved. That's wonderful. I, I love the fact that you have a circus theme. Because for me, the circus is a wonderful place where everybody has a role. And everybody is dependent on each other. And no role is more important than the other. You know, there's certainly, you know, stars and, and people who get more attention, you know, but if, you know, if, if the ro- roustabout wasn't there to set up the rigging and to set up the tent properly, it, the circus doesn't go on. And I love how these, ca- the ringmaster is sending these different characters into your granddaughter's life. Yes, and and as far as them cooperating, you know, it, because they're so mischievous, like the clowns keep honking their horn and waking up her baby, and the juggler throws her baby sister in the air, and and that's really a cute visual. We have the little legs going off the page, but um, it, but you know, and then she put him in the backyard, and all of the, in a tent, and all of these people together in the backyard then encourage her to become the ringmaster. Mm-hmm. So you're right. They The working together is so important. And Aria and her friend, Honor, Honor Brown, who is Les's grand, grandson, decide they're both going to be the ringmasters. And when you have two, they decide it'll be even better than just one. And that's, that's also what we want to teach the children that when you have a friend who believes in you, mm-hmm. 
it's so important and so amazing. Yeah. That's something that we've talked about here in the podcast a whole lot is how, and especially helping kids understand that they can, they may not be able to change the world, but they can change one person's world with a kind word, with a smile, with encouragement. Absolutely. And that's, that's where in this book too, she, and by the way, I've loved your podcast. I've listened to them numerous ones and, and they, she turns to her friend who does come over and help her because he's has spoken before in front of lots of people. So, you know, turning to a friend is just, you know, so valuable. And when your friend is behind you, it's amazing what you can do. Yes, absolutely. I'm curious, how does your granddaughter like being the star of a children's book? She loves it. <laughs> she, it, Well, actually, her cousin is on the cover of, of my adult book, and she wanted to be on a cover of a book. She told me, I said, well, then write one. <laughs> so we did it. And, uh, she's, she was looking forward to doing book signings, but that's not happening right now. Not, not Maybe right. virtually. Yeah, not right now, but we'll be, we'll be back to, back to things. Um, I, I don't think we'll be back to things as usual. I, I hope that we grow from this, this experience and, and hopefully we grow closer together. Uh, but we're definitely are going to be back to book signings and meeting people and being able to to be closer than six feet away from each other at some point in the future. I, I'm I'm curious now. You're a doctor of chiropractic, but you but, but you're also a grandmother, and I know my grandma. I I had a great relationship with with my parents, but my grandmother was so very special to me. She was that best friend, that, that support system. I'm, I'm curious, in this time, has your granddaughter come to you and talked to you about what's this quarantine thing going on and, and how can we deal with it and what's, what, what's happening? Well, what, what we are actually, yes, she, uh, she said that we can't go to school, and I actually wrote a poem about not being able to go to school. But she said we can't go to school because there's a bug and people are dying. Ooh. Yeah. So she has taken it, you know, to the very basic level. And we did we did Zoom this weekend with her and her cousins. I love that we're we're living in an age right now where we have technology that can keep us together. Um, my family, we all were Skyping uh, with with each other last night, and we had family in Puerto Rico and family in Vermont and Western Massachusetts, uh, and we we're all Skyping together, and that's beautiful. And I love, I love that grandparents have this opportunity to even even though they're not maybe not be in the same state or the same country, even that we still grandparents have uh, an, an opportunity to stay connected with our, with their kids and to provide that support because I really do think grandparents are so important in kids lives. Well, we have 12, so <laughs> <laughs> Actually one one is is um in his is starting a second year in chiropractic school. Oh, wonderful. Congratulations. Yeah, so it's, you know, so we talk about that as an influence. Well, his father is a chiropractor also. So that's pretty, that's really, really uh, uh, wonderful to me that, that to see my, not only my child come into my practice, my 50 year old child, and, but also my grandson. I mean, it's just, uh, Amazing. And maybe, maybe Aria will become an author when she grows up. Possibly. That sounds great. She's off to a great start so far. Um, I'm curious, what was it, what did you find more either challenging or satisfying writing for adults or writing for kids? I found writing for, writing for Adults was wonderful and, and there were messages and women were telling me that it changed their lives. 
but there has been nothing, nothing in my life from being a chiropractor, qualified medical examiner, you know, on TV, expert on judge duty, nothing as gratifying as writing this children's book. Not, I mean, nothing. And I wrote it also, I had a 15-year-old illustrator who, whatever was in my mind, she put on the paper. It was so, this was so exciting. That's one, And we have four more. That's one, <laughs> uh, you have f- four more books on the way, you say? Well, four more that we're going to move on. That, so we're real excited. That is really, really exciting. And wow, I'm so excited to have an expert on Judge Judy's show here on the podcast. Um, <laughs> my wife walked, and now that we're she's quarantined and isn't able to, isn't able to go in to teach when she, she was finishing one of her virtual classes with her kids, and she caught me watching Doctor Ju- uh, D- Judge Judy, and she said, "You watch Judge Judy?" I goes, "Yeah, I love Judge Judy. She's great." Anyways. Please tell everybody where they can connect with you online, find out more about the Surprise Circus, and also find out about some of your adult books. The Surprise Circus is, of course, available on Amazon and Barnes & Nobles, and it will be out April 7th in time for Easter, which was our desire to get it into as many kids' as hands as possible for Easter. The age range is three to eight. Mm-hmm. And they can certainly email me at Dr. D.R. Carroll, C-A-R-O-L, Soloway, S-O-L-O-W-A-Y at Gmail. That's Dr. Carol Soloway at Gmail. Okay. And my website is www.carolsoloway.com. Well, we, and I'd love to hear from people. Yeah, and, and just imagine you read the uh, Surprise Circus, and then you send an email to Dr. Carroll, and Dr. Carroll sends an email back to you and your child. What a thrill that would be. And I'll send a, a recording, maybe, of, of me reading it. There you go. Wow, that sounds like a great deal. Well, we've had such a great time speaking to the author of The Surprise Circus, Dr. Carol. Dr. Carol, thanks so much for being on the show. Oh, thank you. Please join us for the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast as we travel to Ontario and Canada to visit with our friend Sean P.B. Robinson. He's going to be telling us about his brand new book, Anna Lynn, The Canadian Spy. That's the next episode of the Reading With You Kids podcast. Hey, I want to give you a, a, a really advanced uh, warning uh, or notice or celebration. On May 19th, we'll be debuting a brand new series of Reading With Your Kids episodes. We're calling the series Solve It. Now, when I say we're, I'm, I'm talking about me and my partner, the dean of all things STEM and STEAM, Jennifer Swanson. Jennifer and I are creating this series of podcasts so that kids and families, and, and this is really neat. This is a, a, a podcast that is designed for kids and their parents to listen to together. And it gives families a peek into the real world of scientists, engineers, and experts as they solve problems in their jobs using curiosity, critical thinking, and creativity. You're not going to believe the guests we have. I mean, I've had so much fun, and you're going to have a lot of fun, too. So make sure you make a note of it, and make sure. Why don't you do this? Why don't you, uh, if you haven't already, please subscribe to the show wherever you get your podcasts from. Now, we are available on the iHeartRadio app. Great place to subscribe. We're available on Apple Podcasts. Google Podcasts, Spotify, Podchaser, Podcast Addict, Himalaya, Stitcher Radio. You kind of get it like we're everywhere. So subscribe to the show so you won't miss it. It's starting on May 19th. It's called Solve It, and we hope you are there with us. I want to thank the folks who made today's show so very, very wonderful. Of course, I want to thank our guest, Dr. Carol. Be sure to check out the Surprise Circus. I also want to thank my really incredible team. Of course, my amazing producer, Fatima Khan. My awesome author, Ambassador Peggy Cotto. I want to thank my beautiful wife for all the support she gives me. I want to thank you. I want to thank you for taking the time to be with us today. But most of all, I want to thank you because you are making the world a better place. 
You're making the world a better place when you get up and you make pancakes for your kids. You make the world a better place when you when you step in there and you teach your kids when schools get closed. And every single day, you make the world a better place by reading with your kids. I'll be looking for you in the next edition of the Reading With Your Kids podcast.